everybody. Today we're gonna talk about the front assembly of the dachshund. And I'm gonna be using the photo of a very well-known dog, uh, Bayard Le Maximilian, and the DCA overlay templates that talk, show the structure of the dogs in a, in a line format. The front assembly of the dachshund is, has many components. So we're gonna talk about all three of the major items, the keel, the shoulder, and the upper arm. This is an excerpt of the AKC official standard of the dachshund. I'm gonna discuss three parts of the front, the chest, more specifically the keel, the shoulder, and the upper arm. This is a photo of Bayard Le Maximilian. He was brought by Mary Howell of Bayard fame. Please excuse the quality of the photo. It's a screenshot of a photo from 1983. But one of the reasons I chose Maximilian is the DCA educational overlay really fits his structure and the photo very nicely. So the chest consists of the rib cage and the breastbone or keel. The front of the keel is the prosternum or the forechest. But the keel sternum then continues under the dog as it joins the rib cage together. The keel should extend well past the front legs, ensuring the rib cage encloses the heart and the lungs. The lowest point of the breastbone or keel should be by the front leg as the keel extends past the leg and merges up to the line of the abdomen. The purpose of this structure is to protect these vital organs as they are entering and exiting a tunnel to a den that likely has roots, rocks, or other protrusions, as well as a potential deadly foe. Now, one of the things I have noticed is the forechest that people seem to think is more important than anything else has become more prominent. However, in assessing the overall structure of the sternum and keel on these dogs, what I see is the entire keel is being tipped or shifted forward and up to make the prosternum more prominent. As a result, the keel no longer extends past the front legs, leaving these vital organs more exposed. When you touch a dachshund's sternum or keel, you should feel the prosternum in line with the point of shoulder. Then your hand should have to move to the side and behind the front legs before you reach the end of the keel. Moving on to the shoulders, the top of the shoulder or the withers should be located behind the neck as they are optimally set at a 45 degree angle from the middle of the dog. This is what is considered a well laid back shoulder. The neck flows into the top line with a smooth transition. Now, a dog could be well laid back, but the placement may be more forward. In this case, the weathers may not be behind the neck. Or, a dog could have good placement, but the shoulder is more upright. Or, you could have neither, and it could be more upright and more forward. In my opinion, as a breeder, I would rather have a dog with a well laid back shoulder that is set more forward than a steep shoulder placed further back, or really a steep shoulder at all. The angle of the shoulder is more important than the placement when considering the overall structure and movement of a dog. I have found it easier to adjust the placement of a well laid back shoulder than to actually create layback in your breeding program. The other end of the shoulder blade is the point of shoulder. The point of shoulder is where the shoulder blade meets the upper arm. The upper arm is the bone that connects the shoulder to the elbow. And ideally, this is set at again a 45 degree angle from the middle of the dog and is the same length as the shoulder blade. When looking at these two bones in the template, you see the upper arm and the shoulder create a 90 degree angle with the point of shoulder being the vertex. The shorter upper arm is a common issue I see today and typically comes with a more upright shoulder where the shoulder blade is also significantly longer than the upper arm. These problems will be easily seen in movement as well. I hope you found that very informative. And next video, we're going to actually use our dog, Cordox Promata Daffodil, or Daffy. Um, we're gonna get her wet, and we're going to go over the same things, but on a live dog to hopefully give you a better idea of how to do this kind of understanding of the structure on an actual dog. Feel free to share questions or comments on the post below and we look forward to seeing you soon.